Today we're going to do a quick review of finding the highest common factor and lowest common multiple of two numbers. We did this in much greater detail in previous years, so if this seems too, too difficult for you and it's going too quickly, you can go back to the key concepts from one of the previous years and review the work more thoroughly there. This is just a very brief review. So let's start with a very simple one, finding the highest common factor and lowest common multiple of 6 and 8. So let's start with our highest common factor. So the co uh, factors, remember, are things that divide into those numbers without a remainder. So what are our factors of 6? Well, what goes into 6? 1 goes in and it's got its partner factor of 6. Then 2 goes in and it's got its partner factor of 3. And then the next number is 3. Oh, but we've already got it. So we've got all our factors of 6. What are our factors of 8? Well, 1 goes into 8 and its partner factor is 8. 2 goes in and its partner factor is 4. 3 doesn't go in. 4 goes in, ah, but we've already got that, so we know we can stop. All right, I've got all the factors of 6 over here. I've got all the factors of 8 over here. And I want the highest, in other words, the biggest of those. Well, if I look through the lists, what is the factor that's in common that they both have? Well, the only thing that they, the ones that they both have are 1 and 2. And which of those is the biggest? Well, it's obviously 2. So my highest common factor of 6 and 8 is 2. All right, what do we do for lowest common multiple? Well, we write out the multiples of each of these. So the multiples of 6 are like this. 1 times 6 is 6, then 12, that's 2 times 6, then 3 times 6, 18, 4 times 6, 24, 5 times 6, 30. And we can carry on for quite a while, but let's just see what about the multiples of 8. Well, 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 3 is 24. Oh, great! I have a multiple that's in common, and that's the smallest multiple that's in common. So I found my least common multiple of 6 and 8, and that's 24. Nice and easy. But if I get to numbers like 100 and 375, and I want to find the highest common factor and lowest common multiple, those methods I've just used are going to take me far too long. It's going to be far too tricky to work with these big numbers and do all the multiplying up and finding all the factors and everything to get it. So what we do is we use prime factorization. And I'm just going to remind you of how we use prime factorization to find your LCM and HCF. Okay, first thing you've got to be reminded of is how to find your prime factorization. So prime factorization, remember, is when we keep on breaking down that number until we get it into just a product of prime numbers. Remember prime numbers? Prime numbers are those numbers that only have exactly two factors, one and itself. Nothing else divides into a prime number. Okay, so let's look, I'll do 100 for you, find its prime factorization. Remember, I'm going to keep on breaking it down until I get to prime numbers. So 100 is 10 times 10. Okay, those on prime numbers, so I must break some more. 10 is 5 times 2. 5 is a prime number. 2 is a prime number. So that's gone as far as it can go. And this 10 also will break into 5 and 2. And you've got your prime factorization of 100. We can say that 100 is equal to 2 squared times 5 squared. There's our prime factorization. Okay, I want you to pause the video now and quickly find the prime factorization of 375 in your homework books. All right, let's go over that. 375. Well, obviously 5 will go into that. So 5 goes into 37, 7 times remainder 2. So 5 into 25, it's 5 times 75 gives me 375. That's a prime number, so I don't need to go any further on that side. Okay, I know that 25 goes into 75, and it goes in 3 times, so it's 25 times 3. 3 is a prime number, and 25 can be broken down into 5 times 5, and those are both prime numbers. So what I have is that 375, its prime factorization is 3 multiplied by 5 cubed. Okay, now that we've got our prime factorization, we can 
easily find the lowest common multiple and highest common factor. To find the lowest common multiple, it has to be a multiple of 100 and a multiple of 375. So it has to contain everything that's here and everything that's there, but nothing more than that. So it must contain everything from this and everything from that. So we know immediately your lowest common multiple must contain ev all the primes that are in each of these. So what's the primes? There's a 2, there's a 3, and there's a 5. Those are the only different primes that there are. So it has to contain all of them. And what you're going to do, because it must contain the whole number, the whole of 100, and it must contain the whole of 375, you've got to take the highest power of each of those. So for the 2s, well, this is the only one that has 2, so you've got to take 2 squared. For the 3s, this is the only one with the 3s, and the highest power there is just the 3 to the power of 1. Um, and remember, we don't have to write in the 1. 3 to just 3 like that means 3 to the 1. Um, and then for the 5s, we've got 5 squared, we've got 5 cubed. All right, which of those do we need to take? We must take the highest power, 5 cubed. And so that is our lowest common multiple, because it contains everything that was here, and everything that was there. And we can work it out. 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 times 125 will give you 1,500. So you've got your LCM. The highest common factor, well, for a factor, if it's a factor, it has to be something that divides into this and also divides into this. So you must just take the things that are in both of these, the primes that are in both of these. So you've got to look which prime numbers exist in both. We can't take a 2 because there's a, although we have a 2 here, there aren't any 2s there. So if we take something with a 2, it won't divide into 375 because there aren't any 2s here. So we can't take the 2s. Can we take the 5s? Oh, yes, we can, because both of these things have got 5s. So definitely there'll be 5s in the highest common factor. Uh, and then let's just look across. The 3, can we take the 3? No, because there are no 3s here. So anything with a 3 in it won't divide into this number. And we have to, in this case, take the lowest power. So we must take 2. And so our highest common factor is 25. So a quick way to help you remember it is to say, funnily enough, if you're taking the lowest common factor, once you've got the prime factorization, you must take, even though it's the lowest common multiple, what you do is almost sounds opposite. You take all the primes and you take the highest. And the opposite is true for the highest common factor, because for the highest common factor, what you do is you only take the stuff that's in both. So you only take the prime numbers that are in both places and you take the lowest. So it's the other way around. The last thing the prime factorization can be quite helpful for is um, finding square roots or cube roots of numbers. Uh, let's take a number like 441 and say we want to find the square root. Well, first we're going to find the prime factorization. So let's do that quickly. I know that 3 will go into that, and 3 goes into that uh, 1, um, 4, 7 times, right? 3 goes into 4 once, remainder 1. 3 goes into 14, 4 times remainder 2, 2. And 3 goes into 21, 7 times. 3 is a prime number, but 147 isn't. And 3 again can go into 147, because 3 goes into 14, 4 times, remainder 2, and 3 goes into 27, um, 9 times. That's a prime number, 49 isn't, but 49 is 7 times 7. And so what we can see is that 441 is 3 squared and 7 squared. Now, what is a square root? When you're asked for a square root, you're asking what number multiplied by itself will give you 441. Well, 441 consists of 3 times 3 times 7 times 7. So obviously, the square root will just be 3 times 7. Because if you take 3 times 7 and you multiply it by itself, you'll have 3 times 7 times another 3 times 7, which will give you 3 squared 
7 squared, which is 441. So the square root of 441 is just 21.